So today on Free Field Training, we are going to talk about a topic that came up in the comments section in which I have to feel an awful lot from new trainees at work. And that is, if unmarked cars are so useful for catching criminals and people committing traffic offenses and all the other purposes that we talked about in my unmarked cars video, then why don't the police use all unmarked cars or why don't they use more unmarked cars? Why aren't like half the cars on the road unmarked? Where are you going? Get out of the way! Now when this comes up and I'm normally talking to a new guy that's in the passenger seat with me the first couple weeks of training and we're talking about unmarked cars and what they're good for, the guy will normally say, oh man, that's really cool. You know, he'll have just seen something that somebody did with an unmarked car and we'll talk about how they were able to get closer to the situation because they had an unmarked car or that they were able to observe some drug transaction taking place or some offense being taking place and pulling up on the un out of the unmarked car and taking enforcement action, they'll say, oh, that's cool, we should use more unmarked cars. The problem with unmarked cars is that they're not perfect for every situation. There are a lot of very serious officer safety and public safety concerns when we start using unmarked cars, and that's why they're mainly dedicated to administrative functions and investigative functions. And while, like we talked about in the other video, you don't see most of the unmarked cars that are out there on the road because I can tell you from my experience that at least half of the police cars that are rolling around on the road at any given time don't have markings on them and light bars on the roof. The ones that you see do, and that's why people have this perception that all of the cars that are being used are marked cars and that there are very few of these unmarked cars, but they can always see them. You don't see the things that you don't see. You don't remember seeing the things that you don't see, and that's kind of the issue with how many of those cars are on the road. But the ones that are on the road are being used for purposes where you either need an unmarked car or where it's a lot more convenient to have an unmarked car. So you have administrators, TAC and narcotics and vice type units, investigators, traffic division. I know that, that brought up a lot of commentary about using them for traffic division, and some of them, a very small number, are used for routine patrol. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen before where when my normal marked car is out of service for the week or when I'm training someone on how to drive police cars uh, that normally end phase of field training, I'll be using an unmarked car for a week or a couple of days. Now, the reason that I will grab an unmarked car for a week or a couple of days at the very end phases of field training is that I want new trainees to not have their first experience in an unmarked car being when they're on their own. Because there's a lot of very serious safety concerns in driving an unmarked car and in the use of an unmarked car, especially when you're alone in the car, even if you're in full uniform. But a lot of guys don't get an opportunity to drive a unmarked police car until they're on their own, out of uniform, or they're assigned to one because there's no other cars available to go hit the streets with. Now the very first very serious consideration to take into account with driving an unmarked police car is with lighting and the total visibility when you're using it in traffic and especially to drive to calls. Right? People brought up a lot about somebody pulling you over in an unmarked car and you not knowing if they're the police or not. Well, if it's a Crown Vic with a spotlight on it and it's got red and blue lights flashing in the windshield and the grill and the headlights are flashing back and forth and you're seeing it from the front, there's really no way to tell if it's marked or not anyway. You're seeing it from the front. Most cars don't say police across the front top of the windshield, although I do think that's cool when, when departments do that. They don't say police across the front top windshield. But the real safety issue with unmarked cars and the public is when guys try to use unmarked cars and they're not familiar with them because they're a lot less visible to everyone else that's out on the road. They're a way less visible. You're running lights and sirens to a call and you're driving a Crown Vic with you know the two little LED banks up in the window and then two sets of two little LED banks in the back window and the wig wagging headlights and the strobe lights in the corner and maybe the lights that are on the mirrors on the side of the car, that thing is not nearly as visible as a fully marked car with a light bar on the roof. I've had instances where I was driving a fully marked car with a light bar on the roof that the lights, this is back when we had rotator lights used to go out all the time, the lights would go out, it would blow a fuse, the lights would go out and I would be able to use the siren, even with the lights completely off, I'd be able to use the siren to effectively clear traffic when I was right in the middle of having to go to something. 
it could be done because you're in a marked car. People hear the siren and they look for the police car and they go, why doesn't that police car have his lights on? Try doing the same thing in an unmarked car, right? With no markings on the outside of the car that the only markings that you have is those little red and blue lights all over the thing. People don't see them. The lights going through the front end of a car have to go through most of the times so that front tint on the top of the windshield, right? You got a tinted line on the top of the windshield and then we put even those big, big visor lights that sit on, not visor lights, but like they're called a supervisor light. And it's like a light bar, just the front end of the light bar in the front, just the front end of the light bar in the back. Those have to go through that, you know, 20, 30% tint at the top of the windshield. And just having to go through another piece of glass and angle through the windshield, it completely ruins a lot of the optical clarity of those red and blue lights. And it doesn't allow the takedowns to be used as effectively. It really cuts down on the overall visibility of the lights that the car has. And then you get in the issue of it not having the light bar on the roof. There's a reason that we put light bars on the roofs of police cars, because they're very, very effective there. They're very effective there, especially your off-axis warning, which is a big problem with police cars. We're starting to get a little better with it with fender lights and more corner lights. But the 45-degree angles coming into an intersection are very, very dangerous when you're entering an intersection. That's why ambulances are required to have fender lights, but police cars aren't. I don't understand that. But that's why... Ambulances are required to have fender lights is because when you're entering an intersection, that is one of the most dangerous times for driving a car code to a call, right? So with a marked car, we have the light bar on the roof. We'll have normally lights in the grill, lights on the back deck. We'll have strobe lights, at least in the corner, and the headlights flashing. And maybe if we're lucky, we get the lights on the fenders and lights on the mirrors. Those are becoming more and more popular, at least where I'm at. Now, when we're driving a car that's set up like that, that has markings all around it, people have a lot of visual cues that that's a police car, and then when you put that up with the audio cues as well, and if it's at night, the reflectivity of the markings on the side of the car, and people figure out really fast that that's a police car. Remember, you're talking about halves of seconds, maybe full seconds when people have to make this decision to stop before coming up to an intersection that they have the green and there's a squad or an ambulance or something passing through a red light trying to clear traffic. When we take all that stuff away, people don't have all that visual interest in their eyes. If you look at an unmarked car that's clearing through intersections, you'll see that oftentimes if you're in the far right lane of, of a crossing traffic where the car's coming up through the intersection, you might only see that corner strobe light on the side of the car. So it's actually fairly dangerous to drive those things code. And that's why I always try to get guys into those cars or at least a car that doesn't have a light bar on the roof, sometimes a marked car that has just the internal lights so they can see how incredibly difficult, how you have to drive these two different car types of cars very differently. So when they get thrown into one, it's not their first time driving it where they don't have somebody that has experience with it to kind of walk them through the process and remind them, hey, listen, dude, you got to slow down. You can't clear intersections at the same speed with an unmarked car that has internal lights that you can with a marked car that has a light bar on the roof and marks at the sides and all of that. Now, the other reason that we don't use unmarked cars as much for patrol, the reason that we don't have half of the cars as unmarked cars, is that most of police work is not catching criminals. Most of police work is not writing tickets. And most of police work is not trying to be sneaky, sneaky and doing stuff. While those have their place in regular patrol duties, only a small portion of what we do every day requires those types of things. And with good tactics, you can still do a lot of that stuff with a marked car. On an average day, I might do 10 domestics. On an average day, I might go to 15 alarm calls. On an average day, I'll spend most of the day driving around a neighborhood in a marked car, just showing the flag, letting people know that the police are in that area. I spend a lot of time going to check the well-beings. The crazy old lady that nobody's seen in three or four days in their house and the neighbor calls and says, hey, can you come check on this lady? I spend a lot of time going to domestics and they're not always people punching and fighting each other domestics. They're domestics of people arguing over a cell phone or keys or a remote control or something silly like that. I spend a lot of time checking on people walking down the middle of the street because there's a sidewalk over there. Not only is that illegal to walk down the middle of the street when there's a sidewalk, but it's like 
what's wrong with this person? Maybe they're a little loopy. Maybe they're a little drunk. Maybe they're really lost. Maybe they just got punched and got knocked out and now they're walking down the middle of the street because they don't know what's going on. Normally, I see somebody walking down the middle of the street, I at least pull up on them and go check on them and make sure they're all right. These are the types of things that police officers do way more than pulling traffic stops and sneaking up and trying to find criminals. And in these tasks, the marked car is really the right tool for the job. When I pull up on somebody because they're walking down the middle of the street, if they are completely shit-faced drunk, I want it to be really clear to that person that the person they're talking to is the police in the middle of the street. And if I'm in a marked car, that's all the more clear for people what's going on. If I go to a check the well-being call for the crazy old lady that nobody's seen for four or five days, and I park my car house over, and I walk up to the front door and I go, Gertrude, Gertrude, can you open up the door? Gertrude, come to the door. And she comes up to the door and she goes, who is it? And I go, it's the police, Gertrude, open up the door. We get to check on you, make sure you're all right. Your neighbors are calling again. She says, how do I know it's the police? It's way easier for me to say, Gertrude, go look out your window. You can see my police car. That's pretty good ID. I mean, most people aren't just driving around a police car that has the name of the city and the, you know, police written two foot tall letters on the side of the road on the side of the car knocking on their door and most people know what police cars in their town look like so it's a pretty easy id for situations like that where i don't want to necessarily put myself directly in front of the door in case gertrude has gone completely off her rocker and decided that she's going to kill whoever comes to the front door like i don't want to stand directly in front of her door but i want to stand a little off to the side by the brick wall maybe knock on the door with the baton if i think she's really going off her rocker depending on the circumstances but like i don't necessarily want gertrude to see me and sometimes gertrude might not have a peephole whether she can actually get to a little old lady with the peephole made for somebody that's normal size she's not gonna be able to see out that peephole so she's gonna be like looking out her window trying to find me if i can say oh you see my police car out front that makes it easier if i'm driving around a neighborhood remember what i said about unmarked cars unmarked cars people don't remember seeing what they never saw right so i could drive an unmarked car around a neighborhood all day especially on day shift and people might think that it's public works because they just see a black crown vic or they might think that it's you know the county sheriff's department doing evictions the county sheriff's department does a lot of evictions where i'm at they drive black on mark crown vics they might think it's some court services thing going on they might think it's just some dude that bought a black crown vic and is driving around the neighborhood like there's lots of things that could be but when i drive a marked police car it says police down the side it's got a light bar on the roof people see the officer in uniform and they know it's a real police car they know it's a marked police car they know it's from the town they know what you're out there doing and people like seeing that and part of the job of the police is to keep things from happening in the first place a lot of it is community caretaking it's something that a lot of police departments don't advertise that they do and a lot of people from watching cop shows don't realize that police are out doing every day community caretaking is a huge huge part of our job it's community policing but community policing shouldn't be a division community policing is a job that we do and whether they realize it or not most cops are out doing community policing all day just by driving a marked car around the neighborhood and checking on things that look suspicious i see somebody's trunk open at two o'clock in the morning i pull up i run the plate i see where the car comes back to and i walk up to the house and knock on the door hey your trunk's open you know your trunk's open I'm like oh my goodness i must hit the button oh thank god nobody stole anything from inside i mean that's a community caretaking function it's, and it's making sure nothing does get stolen from inside that person's car at two o'clock in the morning because the trunk's open it's a lot of checking on broken down cars. It's a lot of checking on people saying there's water coming up out of the ground and calling the local public works or whoever has the contract for the water department. It's a lot of doing that type of stuff. And so for patrol work, while it's nice to have an unmarked car for some tasks, like if there's an alarm off at a bank, it's nice to have an unmarked car that might be able to drive past it without people noticing that it's a police car. And where you get a call of like, six dudes and they're slinging drugs on the corner and you know there isn't a attack unit available to go take it it's nice to have that unmarked car to go drive over there park you know two blocks down with a pair of binoculars and take a look at them and see what's actually going on is this somebody just complaining that there's kids on the corner or are they actually slinging they actually look like they're slinging drugs they got like cars pulling up to them and stuff like that i would never want more than maybe five or ten percent of the cars that are on the road for patrol at any given time to be unmarked cars and the people I want in those unmarked cars would be people 
that are going to go out and work, who are actually going to answer up when they hear those calls going on where you could use an unmarked car for, and who have experience driving them, not the brand new guys who are always so gung-ho to hop in them just so that people don't wave their hand at them and flag them down. So overall, for patrol, the reason we don't use more unmarked cars is the same reason that we don't use more K9 units. K9 units are great. They have a lot of capabilities that other officers in other cars with other resources don't have, but they have a lot of downsides too. A canine can't transport prisoners because they got the dog in the back and most people are not going to do well with a Malinois when they're in the back seat. And it would be a huge liability for us to transport a prisoner when we have a canine in the car, right? So we can't use half the cars on the road to have canines, even though it would be convenient for some circumstances. Most of the work we do don't require a canine. It's the same reason we don't walk around with rifles out all the time, right? Having a rifle is a great thing to have. Maybe if four or five guys on a shift have a rifle with them, it'd be nice in case you get a situation where somebody's barricaded inside a house with a gun, or you got some guy walking through the shopping mall that somebody's saying is swinging a pistol around. It's nice to be able to have those long guns for when you need a longer shot or you got somebody barricaded and you're going to be stood, stood off from a little bit. We don't walk around with those because that would hamper our ability to do to otherwise do our job. Well, the same thing with unmarked cars and marked cars. Patrol uses mainly marked cars because for our purposes, they work better. When we need an unmarked car, it's great to have them around, and it's awesome to have the ability to just call up another patrolman on the air and say, hey, could you bring your unmarked car over here? We've got such and such call. I wouldn't want half the cars on the road or all the cars on the road to be unmarked cars. If you like this type of stuff, you should follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Think about going over to the Patreon and seeing all the other content that we have over there. Until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you.